in just a little bit as well. Uh, so we'll get to that soon. But first, would you take your Bible and uh, let's look together at Genesis chapter 39. Genesis chapter 39, if you will please find your way there in the scriptures tonight. Uh, last week we finished out Genesis 37. I'm going to skip chapter 38 because our focus is on the life of Joseph, uh, although you may want to read chapter 38 sometime uh, where the focus is on Judah and uh, a, a sin that he committed. Just a sad, sad chapter there. Uh, a reminder to us that, uh, that we're all marred and sinful, yet God redeems, and I'm thankful for that. It was from the line of Judah that Christ came, and uh, even though he had a, a terrible sin there recorded in chapter 38. But now on to chapter 39, if you'll find your way there. We're continuing uh, the uh, life of Joseph. We left off last time with Joseph. He had been um, sold by his brothers. What a sad thing. Sold by his own family as a slave. And uh, they didn't quite know what to do with him. Uh, some wanted to kill him. And uh, some of his brothers uh, persuaded the others not to kill him um, and, and let somebody else do the dirty work. And so they sold him instead. Um, and I would assume that their, their thought was, or their imagination was that as Joseph would be a slave, that uh, he would just die a slave, die uh, in, in a sad circumstance, and they would never hear from him again. That was their uh, incredible hatred for them coming out uh, for him coming out. They uh, they just didn't want to have anything to do with him again, and so uh, they lied to their father and sold him into slavery. We find it now in chapter thirty nine and verse one. Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites which had bought, brought him down thither. Uh, and it's interesting, uh, sometimes we have the, the thought or the question, how did the, how did the Jews end up in Egypt? How did they end up there? Because oftentimes we think about Moses and Exodus and all of that stuff, and, and it's all very fascinating to us, but we don't often think, how did they get there in the first place? And here it is. This is how they got there. Sold. Sold into slavery. Isn't that an interesting thought? Uh, and, and so for 400 plus years, uh, they would remain in Egypt as slaves. And it started here with Joseph being sold as a slave right to the Egyptians. So he's bought by this man Potiphar, who is an officer uh, of, Pharaoh, of Pharaoh. He has an important job. He's the captain of the guard uh, or the captain of the executioners. <laughs> and so his job is to oversee the executions. Uh, and so this is where Joseph spends uh, uh, many years here in the house of Potiphar. And, and he's bought then by Potiphar. We talked a little bit about Potiphar last time. Uh, there are some thoughts that he, uh, he may have been a eunuch because of uh, the term there an officer, and, uh, and maybe, um, but uh, we do know he had a wife, and uh, so we'll see how that plays into it here in a little bit. Verse number two now, uh, Genesis 39, and the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Uh, a couple things from this verse. Uh, first of all, I think these two phrases go together. The Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. A lot of us look for prosperity. We look for success. We look for the good life. We look for something great. And the world around us has a lot to offer by way of greatness. And, uh, and it can offer you so many things that seem so good. But you know, nothing is good 
Nothing is successful. Nothing is prosperous unless the Lord is with you. Amen. That is the fact. That is the fact. And, and so even though Joseph was a slave, he was a prosperous slave. He was a prosperous slave. Makes me think of a conversation that, uh, uh, that we had with uh, Christine's brother, John, and he was telling us over there in uh, Saudi Arabia that uh, rather than telling someone uh, that you, you look like you've gained weight, they say, you look prosperous. <laughs> You're looking prosperous. And so Joseph here is prosperous. In other words, all of his needs are met. Yes, he's a slave, but he doesn't need anything. He is, he is prosperous. He's succeeding. He's rising in the ranks, as we'll see. Joseph was prospering because the Lord was with him. If you want to see prosperity in your life, and by the way, the world's uh, definition of prosperity is not the Bible definition of prosperity. The Bible definition of prosper, uh, prosperity is, is a man or woman who loves the Lord Amen. and who is faithful to the Lord. And if you want to see a prosperous life, then you will maintain a relationship with the Lord. The Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. And that's the only reason he prospered, was because the Lord prospered him. And the only reason you'll ever be successful in life is when the Lord makes you successful. When the Lord prospers you. And so don't go chasing the world and chasing after this, uh, all these self-help and, and how-to-it books and, and uh, this for dummies and that for dummies and get on YouTube and figure out how to make a million dollars in one week or whatever. Don't, that's not where it's at. The success is in a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so pursue Him. If I want to be prosperous, then I want God to smile on my life. And so I'm going to do things that make him smile. <laughs> I'm going to be faithful to him. I'm going to yield to his Holy Spirit in my life. I'm going to, I'm going to go where, where he wants me to go and say what he wants me to say. Uh, where God's people are, I'm going to be there. You know, it's, I want to see success. And so I'm going to find that when the Lord is with me. So I'm going to make a friend of the Lord. And evidently, uh, Joseph made a friend of the Lord, and the Lord was with him, and he prospered. He was a prosperous man. He was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. I think that's interesting as well. Um, prosperous doesn't mean you're at the top of society. It doesn't mean that. Now, we know later on, Joseph would reach at least number two in that country, but he was called a prosperous man here while he was a slave. And they go, oh man, I'll never get ahead. I've got this job and I can't make any money and it's just not worth it and society's against me and everybody's against me and, and my life is just going horrible and it's just never going to be good for me. Your prosperity has nothing to do with your, your circumstances but has everything to do with your relationship with the Lord. Amen. You can be a slave you can be in the, in the worst position possible, but you can be prosperous when the Lord prospers you. And so seek after him. Seek after him uh, and let him do something for you. And here, uh, the Lord does some amazing things for Joseph. So here he is in the house of his master, the Egyptian. He's a slave, but he's serving. He's serving. Verse 3, And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. Now that's an interesting verse. His master saw that the Lord was with him. What does that mean exactly? Uh, could it be that Joseph gave glory to the Lord for his prosperity? A lot of people prosper in the world's eyes today, and they say, well, that's because I worked hard all my life. And I did this, and I did that, and I am, I'm really somebody because I really worked, and I, I never quit, and I always kept going, and I did this, and I did that, and, I did, and that's why I'm a success today. But not so with Joseph. Joseph was prosperous, and everybody around him, including his boss, said, you know why he's prosperous? Because the Lord's with him. And I have to believe that's because Joseph said, the Lord is blessing me. Uh, 
If you remember the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says, uh, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. The only way they're going to glorify your Father in heaven is if the good works that they see, you attribute to God. When you say, oh no, it is God that has blessed me. It is God that has done this through me. It is God. He gets all the glory. And then everybody gives the glory to God. And in fact, the reason that God would prosper anybody is so that he can receive the glory. That's why he prospers people. And so if you want to see God prosper your life, then you, you start giving him glory. Start glorifying God and pointing others to the, to the Lord Jesus Christ and, and pointing others to how God has intervened in your life. And then you'll see some blessings. You'll see that God will continue to bless and prosper you. It's an interesting thought. It's totally reverse of what we would normally think. But this is, this is what God does. You see, God gives grace to the humble, doesn't he? He does. He blesses those who come to him in humility and who are, who are quick to point and reflect the glory to him. And so his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. As Potiphar must have looked at his life and said, why, why is it that that everything you do seems to be a success. I don't understand. I don't get it. And Joseph would say, well, it's because I serve the God of my fathers, the God who created the world, the God who is reigning over all things, who even rules over Egypt and over Pharaoh himself. That's the God I serve, and he's prospering me. Wow. You can be a real witness, you know. If you give some glory to God for the things that are happening in your life, that's what happens here in Joseph's life. And, uh, and Potiphar saw that. And so what happens? Verse 4 now. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him. Uh, Potiphar really liked Joseph. Uh, partially because he was prospering <laughs> as a result of Joseph's prosperity. But he really liked Joseph. Joseph seemed to be evidently a man of integrity. Uh, and, and so Potiphar really liked Joseph. Now, uh, it shouldn't be that employers have favorite employees. But you know, if an employee is faithful and devoted and works hard and does their job well, an employer can't help but want to advance that person. That's the fact. If you're, looking, if, if you're looking for some kind of advancement in your job and your position and, and you're thinking to yourself, how is it that, that this person gets an advancement and this person gets a raise and I don't get a raise? What's the deal? I've been here longer than anybody. What's, what's the problem? Well, maybe you ought to look inside and see what the problem is. It's just, it's just natural for a uh, an employer to want to see his business succeed. And here that's what's happening in just a very godless, worldly sense. That's the way the world works. But you know what? When you serve God, you will be the best employee. You will do the best. I remember reading a book uh, about Saddam Hussein. And Saddam Hussein uh, had close advisors to him. And the book that I read was a, a book written by Saddam Hussein's top general. George Sada is his name. George Sada was a Christian. And Saddam Hussein promoted George all the way up through the ranks to be his top advisor. And do you know why? In the book, George Sada said that he had a conversation with Saddam Hussein. And that man knew that the Muslims around him were liars and they were cheaters. And he knew that if he wanted somebody by his side that was going to be trustworthy, he would choose a Christian. Is that interesting or what? 
Here's this guy. He's the, the worst of the worst, you know, Saddam Hussein, but he knows. Those Christians, they're good people. They're good people. And, and they want to do what's right. I find that very interesting, and we see the same thing here. Here's Potiphar. He's the captain of the executioners, you know. What kind of a rough character might this guy be? You know, Heartless, I suppose, to have the job that he had. But he knew God was prospering Joseph, and so he shows favor to Joseph. He shows grace to Joseph. Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him. And that's probably one of the reasons Joseph was actively serving, doing his duty and doing the best that he could. And he made him, this is Potiphar, made him, Joseph, overseer over his house and all that he had put into his hand. Wow. Potiphar sees, well, the more I promote Joseph, the more success I see in my house. Hmm. Maybe I should put Joseph over a little bit more. And a little bit more, and a little bit more, and eventually got to the point that Potiphar set Joseph over his entire house. <laughs> Said, Joseph, you call the shots. You're pretty good at managing this stuff, and for whatever reason, God is blessing you, and, and I like that, and so Joseph, you're going to be in charge. And so, even though Joseph was a slave, God prospered him, and he rose through the ranks uh, all the way up to be the overseer of his house. It says all that he had, he put into his hand. Everything he put into Joseph's hand. Now, you don't do that with somebody you don't trust. You've got to be a, a man or woman of integrity if you want to see that kind of prosperity. And, and that's the fact. You need to be a trustworthy individual. And so... Potiphar knew, I don't have to worry about my possessions. I don't have to worry about anything in my house. I can trust Joseph through and through. And so he trusted him. We can learn a lot of great examples or a lot of great uh, lessons from Joseph and his advancement up through the ranks here. Verse number five, it came to pass from time to time that he uh, made him overseer in his house and over all that he had that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake, and the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in his house, in the house and in the field. Wow. <clears throat> it pays to have godly people around you. <laughs> and that's what was happening here. The Lord blessed Potiphar's house. Why? Not because... God was impressed with Potiphar, but because God was blessing Joseph. And for Joseph's sake, that blessing spilled over. Uh, you wonder why our nation has been as strong as it has been. It's not because our nation is moral. No, no, not at all. It's not because our founding fathers were shining stars of morality either. No, that is not it. But it is because, in my estimation, this place was a place where God could advance his church and his ministry. And there was freedom here for that. And so God continued to bless this place so that God's work would continue to advance. And over the years, the United States became the, the number one country sending missionaries around the world. And I believe that may still be the case today, although you wonder how things are going now. Why does God bless America? Well, it's not because we're a good nation. It's not because we're better people than anybody else. It's not because of our incredible Constitution, although it's wonderful. And I'm a patriotic American, and I love our Constitution because it takes into consideration that man is sinful, and we need accountability, and that's why it's so successful. But God can remove that blessing any time. If God chooses to bless something or someone, it's because he receives glory and his work is advanced. And, he, and the blessing on this country, I believe, has spilled over because God has been blessing his people here, his church here. 
But as his church begins to turn away from him, well, perhaps God will remove his blessing as well. It's an interesting thought. But that's exactly what happens here in Potiphar's house. Potiphar's house was blessed, not because he was good, but because Joseph was blessed of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in his house and in the field. <laughs> Everything that he had, it was blessed. And so verse 6, he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not aught he had, save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. Potiphar was so trusting of Joseph that evidently he didn't even check the books. He didn't even look at the accounting. He knew Joseph would do well. He knew Joseph was blessed of God. He knew Joseph was a man of integrity and a, and a, and a man of honesty. And so Potiphar just thought, I'm not even going to worry about it. And he didn't even know what he had. He had no idea all the blessings that he had. He just knew, well, I got the food when I need it. I'm a happy man. And he was okay. <laughs> and so God blessed him. Why? For Joseph's sake. Boy, I want to be a man like Joseph. Where God blesses. And God sends his prosperity. And I want to, I want to be around people that God blesses. I want to be around people where they are giving glory to God because I know God's going to bless them too. And maybe some of that blessing will rub off on me a little bit, you know? Maybe I'll, I'll be able to benefit a little bit from God blessing somebody else that I'm near. I want to be around godly people. I want to be around people of integrity and people that give the glory to God. And so maybe tonight you're thinking, well, I, I just don't know if my life's going the right way. And I don't know, maybe you're a young person making decisions. I don't know uh, what's going to happen in the future and what the direction is going to be for me. I'll tell you this. Choose godly people to hang around. Be a man or woman of integrity. And give glory to God. Amen. Give him the glory. And you will see that prosperity. And, uh, and God will always be faithful. All right, let's bow our heads and pray. Thank you, Father, for showing us some some great truths in your word here from the example of Joseph. And it's amazing for us to think how you blessed incredibly the house of Potiphar for Joseph's sake. I pray that you would put it in our hearts to be that kind of people, that we would have great integrity, that we would give you glory, that we would surround ourselves with godly people. Lord, I pray that we would see blessings in our lives and that we would not make the mistake of claiming credit for ourselves, but that we would reflect that glory to you, knowing that everything good, every perfect gift comes from above, from you, Father. And so we give you honor, we give you glory, and we look forward to what you're going to do in our lives as we do that. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.